The expectation of buying new cartridges is becoming less and less common these days. Most all games are digital downloads or run off a micro SD card, often requiring a bit of tweaking, copying files, and trial and error. While there is nothing wrong with any of this, sometimes you just want to pop in a cartridge and play. No worries about missing BIOS files or games that won't play. There is a lot to be said about the simplicity of popping in a cartridge and playing a game. The Evercade, created by Blaze Entertainment in the UK, is making headway in bringing back retro games from consoles past in a collectible cartridge form. In this video, we'll check out the Evercade handheld, which was released some time back, and brings back the collectability and nostalgia of cartridge-based gameplay. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a product called the Evercade, which I picked up from Funstock in the UK, and I'll leave a direct link down below. What's different about this device from most everything I've reviewed on the channel is that it plays cartridges. There is no Wi-Fi, no micro SD, or hunting for ROMs. Each cartridge contains 6 to 20 games which can be played on this handheld device. Taking a quick look at the features, it supports 8 and 16-bit games, it has a mini HDMI output port, a 4.3 inch display, selectable 4x3 or 16x9 aspect ratios, game save and load, and the battery will last about 4-5 to five hours. And the premium pack includes 3 cartridges with 37 games. An interesting side note is that all the cartridges that work on the Evercade handheld also work with a new product called the Evercade Versus. The Versus console also uses cartridges connects to your TV or monitor, and in fact has two slots. If you install cartridges in both slots, the games for both will show up in the UI, which is pretty darn cool. We'll check out the verses in a future video and focus on the Evercade handheld in this one. As I mentioned earlier, I picked up this Evercade from Funstock out of the UK. It took around two weeks to arrive, and I wasn't sure what was in the box, so I did have a quick peek. And as you can tell, I got kind of uh, ever happy <laughs> and picked up seven additional cartridges. Well, today I'll be showing the three games included in the Evercade. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see the gameplay of the other seven cartridges. I'm not sure if I'll wind up using this nifty little carrying case, but I might. It's got plenty of room for the Evercade and a few extra cartridges. But the star of the show is the Evercade Premium Pack. It includes three cartridge collections of Atari games, Namco Museum, Interplay. Definitely looking forward to checking them out. Let's go ahead and open the box and see what's inside. First off, we have a quick start guide. It has some good information, but we'll be covering most of it here, so we'll skip over it. On the front of the handheld, we do have an oddly shaped D-pad, which took me a little getting used to, but I do like it overall. You also have a menu button for accessing the system configuration or in-game options. And on the right side, you have your ABXY and select and start buttons. At the top, you have your L and R buttons, a mini HDMI output port for connecting to your TV or monitor, the power switch, and of course, the cartridge slot. On the bottom, you have your volume control, headphone jack, and a micro USB port for charging and firmware updates. Overall, it's a nice looking little handheld. I personally would have liked other color options, but this is fine. Removing the tray reveals the three included collections, such as the Namco Museum Collection 1, with Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Galaxian, and Mappy, just to name a few. The Interplay Collection 1 includes six games and some great titles, such as Earthworm Jim, Battle Chess, and Booger Man. <laughs> The last of the included cartridges in the premium pack is the Atari Collection 1, which includes 20 games in titles from the Atari 2600 and 7800 as well. There are some great classics such as Centipede, Missile Command, Video Pinball, and Yars Return. The package includes a USB Type-A to micro USB cable for charging, but unfortunately does not include a power adapter. These are all three of the cartridges that were included in the premium pack, just to give you a quick glimpse. 
And in case you were wondering, I did pick up collections 1 through 10 of my ever happy shopping spree. <laughs> if you'd like to see a video on any of these collections, please let me know in the comments below. It's been years since I bought a brand new game on cartridge. Of course, we're still dealing with emulation on the Evercade, but the ability to buy physical media in an age that has been primarily digital downloads for years is a pleasant niche, in my opinion. Each cartridge includes a color manual, such as this one. We're looking at Centipede, Video Pinball. It identifies the version or console, the year the game was released, the developer, the publisher, designer, and some interesting information about the game itself. For example, here on the lower right, check this out, Tempest. <laughs> that was never released for the Atari 2600, but here it is. And yeah, it's not that great. As a matter of fact, it's really bad. I'm glad they didn't release it. But it's still pretty cool to have an unreleased Atari game in cartridge form. And here they're showing the first 10 volumes or game collections that you can pick up from Evercade. Let's take a quick look at the cartridge itself. It has a colorful label that identifies the collection and a rounded edge that fits perfectly along the back of the Evercade. One test I like to perform is a power on test, so we'll go ahead and power it on and see how long it takes to boot into the main menu. And it looks like about 24 seconds. I would have expected a little faster, but it's not bad. I remember reading from their website that there was a firmware update, and after checking the device, it is running an older version 1.3 firmware. We'll head on over to their handheld support link, and also in the description below, and download the Windows installer. When launching the application, Windows may not recognize the executable. Just click the More Info link and click the Run Anyway button. Then click the button to install the device drivers. Connect the Evercade using the USB cable included with the device to your computer. Press and hold the menu button and power on the Evercade. The installer will detect the Evercade and will check and see if there is a firmware update available and go ahead and apply it. Now we'll boot up the machine after having applied the firmware update. And it's pretty apparent they made some significant improvements in the UI. It looks quite a bit nicer, much more modern. There are two themes, Neon and Origin. I'll go ahead and switch it over to Origin and put it back to Neon. I kind of like the Neon theme. You got scan lines. You can turn those on or off. Your screen dimming, you can set that for off or if you want it to turn off at some other interval, you can. Display the battery percentage. There are three options for the aspect ratio. And here's shaders and scan lines. Interesting. I'll leave that off for now. You can change the side bezels that appear if you're not in full screen mode. I'll set it for box art. That sounds pretty good. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, under language, you got a number of languages. From what I understand with controller mode, you can use this as a controller for the Evercade Versus. During gameplay, I'll put an image of the collection box art in the lower left. And we'll kick it off with Atari Collection 1, playing Adventure from the Atari 2600. I never owned this particular game back in the day, but I did have a buddy that did. And I used to play it over at his house. Pretty neat game. We'll go into the in-game menu options and move down to the controls. And it will show the button layout. You can also save or load the game state. And we'll look at display. You can change the aspect ratio here in game. I'll put it on full screen and we'll take a look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now we'll check out Alien Brigade. This was on the Atari 7800. I've never played this game until getting this cartridge. So yeah, it was actually pretty fun. I played it for a while off camera and I really liked it. And one game that I spent a lot of time on as a kid was Asteroids on the 2600. And next we'll check out Food Fight on the Atari 7800. Oops. <laughs> 
And Missile Command was an excellent port for the Atari 2600 as well. And you know I had to show this unreleased version of Tempest on the Atari 2600. It's kind of amazing to be able to pick this up on cartridge form nearly 40 years later. Definitely not the best port of Tempest, that's for sure. And Video Pinball, this is a cartridge I did have as a kid and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It was great to see it again on the Evercade. Although, I think it was easier to play with a joystick than it is with this D-pad. Now we'll check out the Namco Museum Collection 1. The games in this collection are all console ports of their arcade counterparts. And there's a great selection of classics here. I'm really liking this Evercade handheld and the ability to just pop in a cartridge and play. It's going to be fun to check them out on the Evercade Versus, so don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell if you want to catch that video. We'll take a quick look at the cartridge here, Namco Museum Collection 1. And let's go ahead and pop it into the Evercade and start off with Dig Dug. Oh, and Galaxian, this is one I used to play a lot in the arcades. Love this game. And likely one of the most popular games of all time, Pac-Man. Now we'll check out the last of the included cartridges, the Interplay Collection 1. This cartridge includes six games, and we'll pick three of them and demonstrate them, and we'll also check out a few of them while connected over HDMI to a portable monitor. And of course, pause this if you want to check out any of the manual there. We'll go ahead and plug in the cartridge. There we go. And we'll start off with Battle Chess. I never actually played this particular version. I did play it on the Amiga, and it was pretty awesome back then, but this is pretty neat to be able to play on the Evercade. I'll plug up this mini HDMI cable between the Evercade and my portable lapel monitor and see what the gameplay is like while connected over HDMI. This feature allows us to use the Evercade not only as a handheld, but as a portable gaming console to your TV. And we'll go ahead and check it out in full screen mode right here with Boogerman. <laughs> a pick and flick adventure. It's actually a pretty hilarious game. Alright, let's go into the settings and we'll move down to display and change the aspect ratio to original ratio. See what that looks like. And as you can see, you have some borders on the side. And of course you can change those if you prefer a different color or a different pattern. Oops. And the last game we'll take a look at is Earthworm Jim. I do have scan lines turned on for this one, so you can see what that looks like. Actually looks really good with scan lines, I think. Oh. <laughs> I can definitely appreciate the simplicity of the Evercade. It's nice that Blaze Entertainment has made it easy to upgrade the firmware and they continue to improve the product and they have a growing library of available cartridges. I'm very much looking forward to checking out the Evercade Versus as well, which should be shipping about a month from the time this video was released. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Evercade and how you prefer to play your favorite retro games today. Thank you so much for watching. 
I hope to talk to you again very soon.